and know what I'm talking about. There, there's a man, there's a man that I've only met once. But he is one of my fathers. I've never talked to him since 1986. But he is one of the reasons that you experience the presence of God in this room. And everyone in this room knows who he is. But people judge him all the time. But, you know, one day in college, right after I had gotten saved, I, I didn't go to the Air Force Academy, and this, they gave me this tape. It was a black tape. And I put it in my little tape player that my mom bought me for my birthday. I had no money. I had to believe just to buy a little tape player so I could listen to this tape. And when I listened to that tape, I went from praying 10 minutes in tongues a day to three hours as long as I had that tape in. And I thought, this man, the power of God in this man's life, but I never met him. I don't know who he is, what he looks like. The Assemblies of God, where I went, they, they didn't want him near the students. So I had to hide the tape. His name was Benny Hinn. And I never heard of him. But I could pray in tongues. I said, what is it about this man? I was just brand new. I'd only been saved about eight months. So I would sneak into the prayer room at 3 a.m., and I would pray in tongues until 6 a.m. Now, please listen to me, because this man changed my life, because he plowed, and he created a path for me. And what you feel in the services is really from him. You know, it's God. But that man gave me an hour of his time. I listened to that tape for two years, I fasted two meals a day. I worked midnight to seven, armed security. I went to class, and then I came home and slept, and then I prayed in tongues all night for seven hours while I was in my security booth. I graduated from college. I went to the, to the next college. I'm working at a five-star hotel. I'm in a tuxedo. And I'm not, I don't know who this man is. I don't know what he looks like. I just know when I listened to his tape, there was an impartation on it. So I'm standing there in this hotel with my tuxedo on, and I'm greeting people. And this family walks by me, and the, listen, listen. The same power that was on that tape walked by me. And his wife's name was Suzanne, and his little daughter, baby, was Sasha. Sasha, he's a little baby. He went to the front desk, and I'm like, I started praying in tongues. And I'm like, what is, whoa, you know? So the head of the, 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 um, the guys that take, you know, that take the bags up to the room, they, he, he just wanted a bellhop. Yeah, he comes over and he goes, you know what? He goes, I think this is your man. That's what he said. He says, I think you should take this guy up. He's like one of you guys. He's a, one of those Christians. So this guy, Benny comes over to me, and he goes, hey, you're taking us up? I say, yeah. He goes, okay, we're in room 806. I still remember the room because it was the power of God was in that room. And I met Suzanne, and I met little Sasha. You know, she's just a, a year old. And he said, hi, it was very nice. And I met both, all of them, and then he, I went back down. I stood, in the, I stood there, you know, we're greeting people. I would get handed $100 bills for just holding doors for these oil guys, you know, these big oil guys. Yeah, oil was just booming. And um, he walks by again because Yonggi Cho was speaking that night. And Benny walks by. But I don't know that's this guy. And the Lord says, ask him to talk to you. 
I said, no, I don't want to do that. I want to be a groupie. You know, I don't want to be like a... T- you know. And then I realized, you know, this guy is the guy on the tape. So I said, hey, Benny, I said, can I talk to you about ministry? And he just looked at me and goes, well, where do you go to church? I told him, he goes, oh, no. He says, you know, that guy doesn't agree with me. I can't, I can't meet with you because I might say something against your pastor, and I don't want to do that. And he says, I'm sorry. I don't do that. And he walked off. And I started crying. Because <laughs> I said, Lord, you said, ask him. And I'm embarrassed. So he gets in the elevator, and it, you know the door shuts. And all of a sudden, you hear ding, which means it's opening again. And he comes out, and he says, the Lord told me I have to talk to you. And he's mad. He said, be here tomorrow night or forget about it. Be here at 7. If you're late, forget it. So he was late. I waited until 7.40. He shows up, and he sat with me for an hour. And as soon as he touched that couch, the power of God, the same power that was on that tape, hit both of us, and he started prophesying to me. And it went on for 20 minutes. And he told me about these days that I'm living in right now. This was in 1986. He laid hands on me and he said, I'm giving you everything that's on me. He says, you're the one. And he, he said, here's my phone number. And he said, you just call me in three weeks. I'm going to send you everything I have. And he did, all, my, all his tapes. And then he said, just throw that phone number away. I'm like, okay. And I never heard from him again. But every time I turn the TV on or anything, that power comes on me and I start praying in tongues. Now, I shared that with you because I want to tell you something. I just sat with his daughter at God TV when I was doing a show. She, was, she did one right before me and her husband. We're sitting at the table, and I'm talking to her, and she's asking me about all, you know, this, what happened to me. And I said, well, you know, it's all your dad's fault. Listen, this is what he said. Benny said to me in 1986, he said, he says, you're going to have my ministry, but it's going to cost you everything. You're going to die. Catherine Coleman told me I'm going to die, and you're going to die. And I did. He didn't mean it that way, but I did die in 1993. (laughs) Okay. My life from that point on turned into altars. From the minute... He said that to me. Everything he warned me about, everything he warned me, he told me exactly what the devil's going to do. He he told me things that he's never said in public, ever. Like, they're not in any of his books. They are like jewels. He gave me for an hour, he gave me the secrets I've never heard him talk about again. But you know, the devil hit him with everything that he warned me about. I watched him get hit after hit after hit. So don't judge people. I'm not going to cry, but I'm, I'm about to. Because that man gave me an hour of my life and changed my life. And that's why I give you the time I do. It's because if I can help you, if I can change your life in some way, if I can give you something that you couldn't afford, if I can sit in front of a camera all day, I, sometimes I do 16 shows a day, and I do them for free instead of charging, because maybe someone will pick this up and take it, just like Benny did for me, just like Jesse did for me, just like Sid Sid calls me sometimes every week, and he says, I just want to thank you for coming back from the dead. I watched, I watched Sid Roth for 14 years, knowing that someday I'd be on his show. But I didn't call him. I didn't manipulate him. I didn't even write a book. I could have made millions off of that book. But I chose for years not to write it. For 23 years, I didn't write a book because I didn't want to do it for money. You see, there are people that appreciate you. Sid Roth appreciates me. 
He said, I have never had anyone on my show like you, ever. Not even close, Kevin. Jesse told me, he said, he said, he's blown away. He said, no one is responding like you are. He said, you're past the 20-year mark. He said, it took me 20 years. Over 20 years to get where you're are, you are in two years. This is rigged. <laughs> the office that I have, the building, Jesse came in there and he said, on this spot, 21 years ago, I had laid on this same carpet and gave this building to God and said, one day, it's going to go to another minister. When he sold the building 11 years ago, he told the people, don't hold on to it too long because there'll be another man of God come and take this building back. He showed me this spot, and now that is my TV studio. Right where he laid his face. My office is Kathy Duplantis' old office. You can't make this stuff up. The Lord told me I would have that office. Jesse asked me, you need, to get, you need to get out of your house and get an office. I said, I'm fine. He goes, Kevin, your, your tables are your CD sets with a tablecloth on it. You got stuff everywhere. You need an office. So he turned to me. He says, what, what, what is, what's it going to be? I said, it's going to be 12-storehouse lane. He goes, that's my old office. I said, it's mine. The next day, we got it. It just came right out of my spirit. I'm telling you this stuff because I want you to know that there's stuff going on in your spirit that's beyond you. But there's people that have the handoff. There's people in this room that are handing it off to others who will carry it. But sometimes people need help. There, there's a couple... In, in, in Illinois, they are so anointed in music. They're so anointed. Every year when I would, they would do the music for me, I would say, you know, I said, I'm going to believe for a new keyboard for you, new equipment. Then the next year, I looked, and they still got that same old keyboard. And I said, I'm going to believe. You still got that old I'm going to believe. And the Lord says, you don't have to believe anymore. Buy them. Buy them the best. So, I, I, you know, the newest thing out, I got eight keyboards myself. I said, you know, I can give them one. He says, no, I want you to buy the brand new, the best out there. So I found out what it was. It's a Nord Stage 3. Pretty expensive, you know. And I had to put my money where my mouth was. So I just bought it. And the Lord says, now they're going to do your album this year with you. It's going to be called Altar Fire. And you're going to launch it on Sid Roth in January. So that's all going to happen within the next month or two. And it just keeps going. I have all these people all over the world that are already lined up with the name of the album that are going to be on my albums for the next five to six years. It's all based on relationship. But sometimes you are the one that's going to activate it for someone else. It's an altar. I walked away from airplanes. I go to Southwest, and I'm not allowed to fly the airplane, so I'm a flight attendant. This captain comes up to me and introduces himself. Jim Wethington, 30 years, Southwest Airlines. He said, um, 
do you have all your, your flight ratings? And I said, well, I walked away from it. He goes, well, when I was 16 years old, I was at an airport watching airplanes take off, and this guy comes up to me, and he owned the uh, FBO there with all the airplanes, and he said, um, you want to learn how to fly? And Jim said, yeah. He goes, well, show up tomorrow. He shows up. You know what he, he asked him to do? Wash his airplanes. Just like your pastor needs you to do stuff here at the, at the church or wherever you go. He had to wash airplanes, but then the guy started taking him up and teaching him. He got all his ratings for free. And the guy said to him, all I ask of you, Jim, is that someday before you die that you do it for someone else. So Jim says, Kevin, you're the man. God told me you're the man. So he gave me $250,000 worth of flight training for free. But see, he doesn't know that I have an altar somewhere where I walked away from it. You getting it? You have no idea how much pain I've been through. You know, the reason why God can use somebody is because there's a vacated space inside of them. So please don't judge people. I'm going to say one more thing. In February, I woke up from a dream. I was on takeoff in a brand new jet. My wife was sitting across from me. Jesse and Kathy DePlanis were on the other side, just like where we sit when I'm on his jet which he's not allowed to have, but it's too late because I've already been on it. And he's fine. He just pays for it himself. Don't worry about it. He's a, he's a billionaire on his own without taking a salary. But he won't tell you, so I'm going to. He prays in tongues and invests his money and became a billionaire. He paid cash for his house. It's the largest house in Louisiana, but it's his house, and he paid for it with his own money because he prays in tongues, and he invests in diamonds and property and gold because he's crazy. He's a crazy Cajun, and he prays in tongues, and he's crazy. He's just literally Holy Ghost crazy, but you wouldn't know it. I couldn't find that jet in a, in a, on Google, so I looked at the interior because it was, it was stitching in light leather, tan, and it was white stitching. And the Lord said to me, find it. I go, Lord, you're picking a fight with the Philistines here. I say, you're picking a fight. I'm not asking for a jet. I already saw what happens when you do that. So the leather from the interior came with me out of the dream and filled our house. Everywhere we went in the house, you could smell this strong leather smell. So now I'm stuck. So I found it. It's Pilatus PC-24. The factory is in Switzerland. So I come to speak at Curtis's church. Pastor Curtis, right up here, wave, Pastor Curtis. And... I'm at another church in Zurich in May. Now, I tell Jesse about this dream, and he just starts laughing. You know, all you see is white teeth. <laughs> and I go, Jesse, he's picking, God's picking a fight here. I, I'm not, you know. Anyway, we go there, and this, this banker, this Swiss banker that we all know, he shows up at every meeting. He has falls me from country to country. He asks, can Kevin and Kathy come and eat at my house? And it's like an hour away. Now listen, listen, you've got to listen. This is story time.
I told the pastor, if you go with me, I'll go. So we, we traveled into the, into the Swiss Alps there in the mountains. And so we go up this elevator in his house, and we're served like five-star gourmet meal in his living room, dining room. And I look out the window, and he goes, well, welcome to Stan's. I go, you mean where the Pilates factory is? He goes, yeah, it's right down there. You want to go? He says, you need a jet. He gets on his phone. He calls the president. And he says, we're coming down in 45 minutes. Get ready. I want to look at your, your planes. There's four of them on the assembly line, but none of them are out yet. This is how God works. In 45 minutes, I'm in the exact airplane that was in my dream with the stitching, and Kathy says, this, this leather smells so strong. I go, hello. That's what <laughs> so I take a picture of me and her in the cockpit, and I just put it on Facebook. Are you ready for this? I had three different partners that were giving 1000 a month. That's 36000 a year. They dropped it as soon as I published that picture. No, I don't have the jet. I have a model of the jet and a jacket. <laughs> and I didn't start this. Okay. I've been holding this back, but I'm not holding back anymore. I'm telling you something. Why would somebody drop me and what God has sent me to do on this earth? Because I publish a picture of a jet that I don't even own. And the only way that I'm in that jet is because God showed up. I can go on because it gets really freaky after this, <laughs> but I'm not. I just wanted to share with you that there's things you know uh, that you don't know about us that will freak you out. Because this whole thing is rigged. God sent me back, and he told me, Jesus told me, you cannot lose. If you go back, you cannot lose. He said, I just want you to know that. It's rigged. It's completely rigged. That's the way it is.